Welcome to this webinar where the future of the ECA submission system will be presented. My name is Daniele Ape and I work in the submission and processing unit in ECA, which is the unit in charge of the coordination of this project. Submission systems play a crucial role uh, in the agency's landscape as they represent the gateway for a structured data made available to the different processes uh, ECA deals with. In fact, data preparation and submission sit at the beginning of those processes. Today, you will have the opportunity to hear about the plans ECA is working on to revamp the approach towards the submission systems which are relevant for industry. You will also learn about the element which trigger the need for a revision of the approach towards the industry submission and the kickoff of this uh, long-term project. One of the main reasons, as you will hear, is the foreseeable variety, types and volumes of submissions which ECA will be likely asked to deal with. We will also uh, brief talk about all the <clears throat> how the, all the relevant stakeholders will be able to remain informed about the development of this project and about the support that we may that we will need. We strongly believe that the development and implementation of such an ambitious and long plan <clears throat> and the achievement of the vision we have defined must include a strong engagement of all our relevant stakeholders. And this is something that ECA intends to invest on even more. From this moment and for the whole duration of this uh, uh, webinar until and until 12.30 Helsinki time, our panelists uh, will remain available for you to answer all the questions we may have about this uh, topic, the topic we are presenting today. And you can ask questions using the Slido tools at slido.com and using the, <coughs> the code that you see on this slide. Please, when asking questions, keep in mind that the process is still in its initiation phase, in this its definition phase. And therefore, many details need to be still discussed and analyzed. Furthermore, please ask questions which are relevant with this webinar. Otherwise, we always suggest to use the ECA contact form that you can find on our, on our website. Shortly after <clears throat> today's webinar, we will make available as usual all the documents and information uh, relevant for this webinar. In particular, on the webinar section of the ECA website, you will find the recording of this webinar. You will find the presentations that we, we have used today. And you, always, you also will find uh, the full compilation of questions that we have received together with the relevant answers. <clears throat> the program for today's webinar includes an explanation about the reasons why the rethinking of the submission approach is needed, which will be given by my colleague Javier Sanchez Asais. He will be followed by Vasileos Sifutis, who will provide a bit more detail about how the future submission system will most probably look like on the basis of where we stand now, what we know now and what has been analyzed so far. I will eventually wrap up and conclude the event with information about next steps, so which will, what will happen in practice after this webinar. We hope you will find this event interesting. And I can now pass the floor to my colleague, Javier. Hello, my name is Javier Sanchez. And in this presentation, I will talk about the reasons for considering a renewed approach towards our submission systems. I will touch on the main drivers influencing this transition, both from a regulatory point of view and from a technological point of view as well. For this, I will briefly look at where are we today and what is the context ahead of us. 
So what is our focus today and how our submission systems support the work we do here at ECA? Well, we are the European Chemicals Agency, so it should not be a surprise for anyone that our main role is implementing the EU chemical laws. In the screen, you can see the four main European regulations dealing with chemicals which we implement. They are our core legislative mandate on which we have been delivering for more than a decade. These regulations constitute the basis of the EU system to manage chemicals. With REACH, the first one, information on industrial chemicals on the market is not only gathered and generated, but also used to identify chemicals that pose a concern or a risk, and then deciding what is the best way to tackle this risk. If we move to the second one, to the CLP regulation, it establishes how to classify and label chemicals, which is the starting point for communication about their hazards. Substances used in the biocidals um, product regulation, the third one, get controlled through a system of, of authorization. And finally, the fourth one, the PIC regulation, establishes rules on the import and export of certain hazard chemicals, including mechanisms to ensure safety. This chemical management system has generated the world's largest knowledge base on chemicals, and it has done so by heavily relying on robust submission systems. Systems not only to submit the information to us, to the European Chemicals Agency, but also to communicate the related regulatory decisions. In a nutshell, these systems are REACH IT for both the REACH and CLP regulations, R4BP3 for the Biocidal Products Regulations, and EPIC for the PIC regulation. But over the years, the union has entrusted us with new tasks, always related to chemicals management, which we deliver expanding our portfolio to different chemicals, processes, and data. Some of them are going farther down in the supply chain, such as notifications of hazard chemicals in products and building what we call the skip database, or notifications of hazard misters to poison centers but also new types of chemicals such as nanomaterials, persistent organic pollutants, or chemicals in materials in contact with drinking water, to give some examples. In terms of submission systems, what we call our ECA submission portal serves the needs of duty holders for both the skip, so the chemicals and products, and the hazardous misters to poison centers. As an important novelty here, this system, the ECA submission portal, included the possibility of automated submissions directly from company systems to our systems, what we call system-to-system -system submissions of data. This has facilitated the submissions of millions of notifications in the last years. But of course, ECA does not do all this alone. There are clear roles and responsibilities for different parties in the regulations, including industry and member states. The implementation of the regulatory processes required a high degree of interactions among all these parties. We receive information from industry, we address decisions to industry, and we do it through a high-paced collaboration with national authorities and with the European Commission. Here again, our submission systems play a key role. They facilitate not only all this exchange of information, but also they do it in an efficient, consistent, and traceable manner. We have been delivering on this work for the past 15 years or so, which is a good time to reflect on what have we learned from the implementation of the regulatory processes in general and the role of our submission systems in particular. A first reflection here is that investing in solid processes and tools pays off. Things like automation, for instance, have always been very present when implementing our tasks. This is key for efficiency. But it also brings consistency to our actions, as well as transparency and predictability, which brings a high degree of credibility. This is very important for us. We are transitioning from data collection to data utilization. 
The chemical regulations started as a big data collection exercise, as there was the, as there was there was the need to understand which chemicals were on the market, but also in which volumes, for which uses, and what kind of information was available for them. This was the focus of the first year first years of our work. We are now, however, moving more and more into how to best use all the information we have gathered and how to continue making it available in the most appropriate way. When implementing new tasks, we have seen that it works best when they are close to our competencies, when we can apply synergies with existing processes and with our existing tools or with our existing submission systems. And the past has taught us as well that it's very important to keep our doors open. Continuous exchange, continuous collaboration with our stakeholders is key. With companies, with national authorities, with the European Commission. And we have always invested in providing support to companies, duty holders, but also to national authorities. Support with compliance with the chemical regulations and how to interact with us using our submission systems. We have delivered on our mandate through, develop, through the development of a collection of submission systems. We started with Rich IT back in 2008, serving the Rich regulation at first with a focus on pre-registration and then registration demands. And we expanded later on to support the CLP regulation as well. In 2012, we developed R4BP3 to serve the biocidal products regulation submitting applications, but also exchanging information between companies, the European Chemicals Agency, member states, and the European Commission. EPIC followed shortly in 2013 to support the prior informed consent regulation. Finally, in 2019, we released the ECA submission portal, initially for notifications to poison centers, followed by the notification under SKIP or notification of hazardous, chemi hazardous chemicals in products. And later supporting as well submissions of plant protection products in collaboration with EFSA, the European Food Safety Agency. As I mentioned earlier, the ECA submission portal offers the possibility for automated submissions directly from the company systems. All these systems have delivered through key deadlines allowing the submission of millions of notifications, registrations, and regulatory applications. But it's true that they also constitute a growing portfolio of systems with overlapping users and also overlapping functionalities to a certain extent. That was the road so far. Let's look now at what the future might bring. And there, there are regulatory drivers on one side and technological drivers on the other. Looking at the regulatory drivers first, we have a new policy context. It includes a wide variety of aspects interrelated, all falling under the umbrella of the EU Green Deal, which was approved in 2020. All of them are relevant to chemicals management since chemicals are present everywhere. But perhaps of key interest for us is the zero pollution ambition together with the chemical strategy for sustainability. These initiatives will translate in reviewed regulations, in particular in a reviewed REACH regulation, in a reviewed CLP regulation, and potentially with additional regulatory tasks assigned to ECA as well. And in turn, this will mean new demands for our regulatory submission systems which might need to absorb not only reviewed processes, but any new tasks, if those new tasks include submission and exchange of information as part of it. In addition to the changing regulatory landscape, we also need to consider technological drivers. I summarize them in this slide. They include access to new leading edge technology, such as, for instance, the opportunities brought by the public cloud the public cloud trends with its opportunities for scalability, flexibility, automation, and the like. But also the implementation of agile ways of working, which facilitate clearer priorities and higher quality products as well. 
putting emphasis on user centricity uh, is another element to keep on delivering value for the users and data as a key element with focus on higher quality data and putting data in the center of our operations. And lastly, and definitely the need for maintaining high security standards. Before concluding on my presentation, let me do a brief reflection on what does this all mean for ECA and for our submission systems. It can be summarized in one sentence. Our focus continues on delivering on our current mandate, while at the same time preparing for the future. This is true in general for ECA activities and also when reflecting on the future of our regulatory submission systems. We are looking into further opportunities for streamlining how we perform our current work, answering to the demands for speed and flexibility in our actions. Also, improving how we make data available and reusable, as we host the biggest database in, in, on chemicals in the world with multiple use cases. By the way, for further information on this topic, on the topic of data availability, I invite you all of you to follow our recent webinar on the plans for the new data availability system. When preparing for the future, review regulations with potentially new tasks, we are leaning towards more legislation neutral processes and tools, looking for synergies, looking for efficiencies, reusing components instead of implementing customized solutions where possible. This also means rationalizing our portfolio of submission systems for the benefit not only of the regulatory processes, but also for the benefit of the users. We see our submission systems and our IT systems in general serving as catalysts for the ambitious regulatory goals and at the same time getting fit for the future. This concludes my presentation and I thank you very much for your attention. Hello, my name is Vasilios Tsifoutis. I'm a product manager in the European Chemicals Agency. And in this presentation, we're gonna look on what the future holds for ECA submission systems. We're gonna discuss a bit the new tasks that are coming along ECA's way, the current situation as far as the submission systems of ECA are concerned, and also the way forward, what will happen in the next years. As also discussed by my colleague Javier in the previous presentations, there are tasks, new regulatory tasks that are coming to ECA. There are now discussions of what will be assigned to ECA and what to other agencies. At the same time, we have the revision of the existing tasks, the existing regulations, namely the CLP and the REACH regulations. And for the moment, we have concrete dates only for the CLP revision, where we have the Commission proposal already published in December 2022. And in January 2025, a new regulation that ECA will take care of, the Drinking Water Directive, it's then that it will come um, into force. Now, for the rest of the activities, discussions are ongoing. Possibly this year we'll have more concrete news about what is happening. But anyway, we are looking of a time span between now to 2026, 2028, where all those things will come into place and everything will be into force. Now, thinking about this new, let's say, regulatory reality that will happen, we have to see also how we're going to tackle this, how we're going to digest all those new regulations. And as far as the submission systems are concerned, we need to see how we're going to develop our systems in the future in a way where we can digest all this new information that will come. It is true that the current practice, or let's say the past practice in ECA, was that every time that a new regulation will come into force or will be assigned to ECA, we will develop a new system in order to implement this regulation. 
So for example, when REITs and CLP came into force in 2008, REITs IT went live as well. Then in 2013, if I remember well, it was the biosites where R4BP3 came into picture. Peak, we have EPIC. And then later on, when um, the Poison Centers notification came into the picture and skip, then we developed the ECA submission portal. Now, the reality is that by building different tools for every regulation, this allowed us the flexibility, let's say, to tailor-made those applications according to the specific needs of every regulation. And that provides us a lot of flexibility in that sense. But at the same time, this practice came together with some challenges. And those challenges are even more evident nowadays that uh, the new regulations are coming and we will need to see what we're going to do with them. So the challenges mainly are that we need to maintain all those different systems, which also is quite a resource consuming uh, exercise, let's say. At the same time, since we are developing those applications in different time intervals, the technology is not the same, is not consistent. So, in some cases, we are risking that for some of those tools, the technology will become obsolete and will not be able to accommodate anymore any user needs, let's say. And this is quite true, actually, at this point for its IT, where, you know, it is, the technology is quite outdated, it needs to be modernized, and we need to revamp the whole application. Especially if we want to accommodate the new wave of submissions that will happen now with the revision of CLP and REITs. Of course, that means that then we will need to focus only on one application and do this exercise only for one application. And later on, every application that the technology is outdated, we will need to redo the same exercise again and again. That, of course, uh, leads us to duplication of work, not only in terms of upgrade of technology, but also, if you think about it, also from user flows perspective, from business flows perspective. As I said, it is true that we had flexibility when we were building those specific tools, but also many of the functionalities or many of the flows in these tools are quite similar, if not identical. So, for example, the uploading of a file and submitting a file, the checking of the file, business rules, and so on. The messaging, how a user search for their submissions, all those are functionalities that are quite shared within those applications. And at the moment, what we are doing is that we are redeveloping the same thing again and again in all those different applications right now, which is also since this is being developed by different teams, <clears throat> different colleagues, different users, the consistency is being lost there. Especially when we're discussing about users that they are dealing with all the regulations and they have to deal with every system by itself. Now, having this new regulatory reality, we have seen that as an opportunity to rationalize the submission portfolio, to see how we can optimize our systems so that uh, we can serve better the users in a more unified approach, but also at the same time to be able to accommodate all the different new needs that they are coming with the new tasks, with the new regulations that we already know, plus the ones that we don't know and that will come into the future. At this point, it's not efficient, let's say, or it doesn't make a lot of sense to continue with this approach and start developing tools again and again for every new regulatory task that is coming to ECA. So, that led, leads us to this slide, to the future, where the objective from ECA side is that eventually we need to have one industry portal, one unified portal, where all the users, regardless of the regulation that they are dealing with, they will have one way of communicating with ECA via this system. It is true also that we have quite a lot of experience nowadays after so many years on how to build systems. We have a lot of capacity on building different user flows. And in that sense, we can also simplify what we currently have. 
And at the same time, we can explore all the synergies and all the commonalities that we have in the different tools and also the commonalities in terms of functionalities that will come with the new regulations and build them only once. And this can be reused by everyone, regardless again of the regulation and regardless of the user specific needs, which should be accommodated and will be accommodated in a unified approach. That will help us in many ways, as you see also on the slide, but also at the same time it will help us to help the users better. For example, we will have a centralized incident management. Also, the user support will be also be centralized and uniform. And the communication between ECA users will also come in one way. So that means much more consistency and much more efficiency for the future, for everyone involved. And we are going to the way forward. The way forward is the objective that we have to have this new industry portal up and running sometime in 2026. Of course, this project is quite a big project and it cannot go in one go. So we will need to split it into phases. As we discussed before, the rich IT is the one that is currently in the biggest need because of the technology, but also because of the revision of the regulations that is dealing with that rich IT is dealing with rich IT and, RITS and CLP. And at the same time, we have the ECA submission portal, which is a very simple portal with flows that they are identical to some of the flows that Rich IT has. So this is the opportunity now to start with the first phase of the project in integrating Rich IT and ECA submission portal under the umbrella of one unified industry portal. There is a lot of work ahead of us, as you can see also in the slide. And this work is not only relevant for EGA, but it's also relevant for the users, for you. And there is where we will need the support of the users to develop those tools, to hear the needs, to work together with them when we are developing this industry portal, and to be able to accommodate all the different user scenarios that you as the user has when dealing with ECA and the tasks that we are at the moment working with in ECA. In terms of users, my colleague um, Daniele in the next presentation will also go a bit more into detail on how we can cooperate with you. Of course, we have a lot of work ahead, but there is also work that has already started. At the moment, we have industry user groups that uh, they are uh, uh, for every tool itself. They are isolated for every tool itself, let's say. And we have informed all those industry user group about groups about the plans that we have in the future. And at the same time, we have informed the authorities that they will be impacted most by this change. For example, the member state competent authorities for each and CLP of the European Union. We lately finalized in spring in 2023 a usability evaluation study which was a small study and actually we started this one in, in order to start rolling the ball, let's say, towards the objective that we have for 2026. It was a study that helped us in a high level to define a bit the roadmap of where we want to go and when we want to go there. It covered all the different tools and it gave us also the opportunity to discuss with users, with key industry users, that they are using all those different tools that we have in order to understand their needs and also to see together with them how the approach of unifying all these portals needs to look like. But also it gave us the chance to see how those users are currently using the current systems. And since this is finalized now, after the summer we will go to the next step, which will be the actual project where we are going to design the industry portal and we're going to develop it. The first phase of this project will start after the summer and the end date, let's say, is about end of 2024. What are we going to do in this first phase? We're going to develop the prototypes of all the, all the prototypes of this unified industry portal. So we're going to design the whole portal. 
But this cannot happen only with ECA. There is where we will need also the users to develop with us, to design with us these prototypes, to test those prototypes and also have the user acceptance of all those prototypes that we will develop. And after this exercise will be ending, then we will start with the actual development of the portal in order to reach the tentative date that I have presented in my previous slide for the Unified Industry Portal. So that's all from my side at the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I will pass the floor to the next presentation. Thank you very much. As you understood from what you heard today, ECA has reached the conclusion that the time has come to assess and reconsider the industry submission system as a whole in order to be able to properly and effectively cope with the new, but also with the existing tasks. In doing so, the focus will be on the possibility to take over new regulatory tasks and implement new processes in an efficient and effective way. We also want to consider the need to keep up with the technological development. Although stakeholders have always been at the center of the ECA activities, we understood that such a plan, such a long and, and important plan, requires further investment in the engagement and the collaboration. Finally, a revision of the current submission approach should happen across the different regulatory framework the ECA is involved into, with the goal of uh, harmonizing and improving the user experience and also to better support industry in the fulfillment of the regulatory task. From now on, ECA will continue and intensify its work uh, on defining the details and the practical step for the implementation of the submission vision. We will focus on the definition of the different flows that user of, the, of our system needs to uh, go through for the, for the different regulatory purposes. At the same time, special attention will, will be given to the analyze, analysis of the renewed uh, user experience and the definition of the new interface. We will also promote the engagement of all our stakeholders, as I mentioned also at the beginning, to uh, help us, they will, we will ask them to help us in identifying the best solution, uh, which will support convergence and harmonization of the existing tool. In practical terms, what we are planning to do is to set up a new specific uh, users working group. This will be at least initially and intentionally uh, limited, will be kept limited in number of participants and will be tasked with supporting ECA by, for example, testing prototypes or providing practical input for the development of the project. After the summer, we will approach key stakeholders from industry association, uh, which are mostly already working with us in the different system specific working groups to verify their availability during the whole lifespan of the project. We foresee this project to last at least until 2026. We will provide after the summer with more details on how this working group is expected to work. Before concluding, I want to underline that obviously we intend to keep the wider audience informed and this will be done via existing channels, such as, for example, like a website, social media, our newsletter, and possibly some specific new communication tool that we will identify. Therefore, at this point, I want to thank you very much from, for your attention. I hope you uh, found this uh, event useful. And before leaving you, I want to remind that our panelists will remain available still until 12.30 Helsinki time to answer to the question that you may have. Thank you very much. <laughs>